Hello growers, I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. We publish articles, tutorials, and guides on the science and practice of growing cannabis. Today I'm testing the new Maxison MF1000. It's a great small grow light. It pulls only 100 watts, but has superior efficiency and top-end Samsung and Meanwell components. The MF1000 is a cute little light that packs a considerable punch. I'll do an unboxing, run it through our official PAR test, and do a dimming test with the handy remote control. Grow light PAR testing is part of the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. Our goal is to educate growers about horticultural lighting. We conduct scientific grow light testing and publish reliable, science-based knowledge, data, and reviews for home growers. You can support our work by following our links and using our discount codes when you shop for grow lights. After the video, come visit the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Guide. You can read our grow light articles, try the grow light calculator, and review all the grow light PAR test reports. Today I'm testing the Maxison MF1000. This nice printed product box was packed inside a plain brown Amazon box. I'll open up the box and we can see how well it is packed up. Protective cardboard, and then a nice user manual. It covers both fixtures in the MF series. I'm going to test the larger MF2000 soon. Let's see. Okay, this is the hanging kit, and then the power cord, and the ratchet pulleys, and there's one more accessory up here. These new 2021 models of the Maxison MF series come with remote controls. It's a fun way to adjust the dimmer. We'll play with that later. Let me take out these extra protective pads and lift the MF1000 out of the box. It's a cute little light with a high efficiency meanwhile driver and Samsung diodes. It's well put together and feels solid. The reflector on the MF series looks like the Mars Hydro TS series, but other than the reflector, they're not very similar. We recommend the Mars Hydro TS series, but it's a lower priced product line. The Maxison MF series has superior components, higher efficiency, and better build quality. The reflector on the MF series fixtures is sturdy. And mounted to the top of the reflector, the MF series has a 15 mm ribbed aluminum heat sink. That really should help control the heat. On top of the heat sink, you can find one of the tiniest Meanwell drivers. On one side of the driver, there's a plug and a switch. The Meanwell driver is mounted on the heat sink. It's not easily removable, but it isn't really large enough to worry about heat. On the other side, there's a controller which communicates with the remote control. They pack 350 Samsung LM281B Plus diodes into this little light. That allows them to run each diode at a low wattage, which really helps efficiency and longevity. And you can see they have a protective coating. Let's flip it over and hang it up. They provide a pretty standard hanging kit with four cables with clips. They're too long, so I put two clips on each cable and just use one cable per side. There are holes on the four corners of the heat sink to attach the clips. I'll go ahead and plug in the power cord. Now I'll just clip the ratchet pulleys to the cables, and I'll pull on the loose ends to lift the MF-1000. And there it is, hanging up. I plugged it into the power meter, and I'll flip the switch and we have light. Let's take a look at the diodes. They use 3500K warm white and 5000K neutral white, along with a few 660 nanometer deep red and 730 nanometer infrared diodes. Together they create an excellent spectrum for vegetating and flowering cannabis plants. There are a lot of diodes for a little light. 350 is a lot more than other lights in this class, which is certainly a point to consider. I'd rather have a fixture like this with 350 Samsung LM281Bs than one with only 200 LM301Bs. I think this MF1000 will do very well in my test. But first I have to let the diodes warm up and stabilize. So let's head over to the Maxison website and see what they say about the new MF1000. All right, here we are on the Maxison website. On the product page for the MF1000, they provide some nice product images and descriptions. You can see the list price here is about $130. But we have a discount code for the MF series through Amazon. If you want the best deal on the MF series fixtures, shop Amazon and use code MF1000COCO or MF2000COCO. Currently our discount is 15% off, so you can get the MF1000 for only $111. We can see here that Maxison claims a photon efficiency of 2.8 micromoles per joule. This is a calculated value based on the Samsung LEDs and the Meanwell driver. I have more confidence in Maxison to provide reliable data than a lot of other brands because they have a history of pushing back against some of the deceptive practices in the industry. And down here there's a little evidence. You'll see they published the actual power draw of 100 watts. Back when all the Blurple LED makers used to only publish the BS calculated power draw, 
Maxison was the first to start publishing the quote-unquote actual power draw. Other brands have since followed suit. In today's market, some brands inflate their photon efficiency, but I trust Maxison more than most. So let's go see what the Growlight calculator thinks about this data from the MF1000. Here we are at the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Calculator. This is our tool to help growers analyze grow lights. You can take manufacturer data, like we gathered from Maxison, and use it to estimate what the fixture will actually produce in your grow space. I'll enter the data about the MF1000, and then we can compare the calculator estimates to the measured results of my PAR test. The power draw is 100 watts. If you shop Amazon and use discount code mf 1000 coco the current cost is $111. And then we need to enter the data about the photon flux, or the photon efficiency. The calculator gives options for different types of photon flux data. Most manufacturers provide calculated PPF data. If the data is from an integrating sphere test, we would select total PPF. And when we measure PPF in a PAR test, it is usable PPF. The data we got from Maxison is a calculated value. They claim a calculated photon efficiency of 2.8 micromoles per watt. Okay, these are great numbers for a little light. The calculator predicts a usable photon efficiency of 2.05 micromoles per watt, which is superior for any light. At an estimated 54 cents per micromole, the cost efficiency is insanely good. But it's just a small little light. The calculator expects it to cover just over 3 square feet. I'm going to test it in a 60 by 60 centimeter space, which is just about 4 square feet. So the MF1000 may not fully fill in the PAR map, but these are impressive stats for a 100 watt light. Let's go run the test and see how the MF1000 performs against these estimates. I'll place the Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor under the middle of the fixture, and then I'll arrange the walls to create a 60 by 60 centimeter, about 2 foot by 2 foot test area. I use diamond pattern mylar to cover the walls. They simulate reflective walls in a grow tent and eliminate overspill losses. They're very important to accurately assess the performance of grow lights. Once the walls are installed, I use the PPFD data from the sensor to set the hanging height. I need to lower the MF1000 to get the PPFD up to 1000. Our official PAR tests always have a maximum PPFD of 1000 micromoles per square meter. That's the maximum safe level for cannabis plants without supplemental carbon dioxide. Once I get the height close, I work to make sure that the fixture is level, centered, and square. If you have any questions about the testing methods or want to learn more, I invite you to read our grow light testing protocol. All right, it's all set up. The hanging height is 23 centimeters, about 9 inches above the sensor, and the maximum PPFD is right at 1,000 micromoles per square meter. Let's run the PAR test. In a PAR test, I measure the density of PAR photons, the PPFD, in each square in the grid. We make PAR maps to show the distribution of density across the canopy, and we can determine the average density and use that to calculate the usable PPF, which is the amount of light that arrives to the canopy. The reflector on the MF1000 is going to help with distribution, but remember, we don't expect it to be able to fully light this 4 square foot space. I'll grab the last PPFD reading, and let's take a look at the PAR map that this test produced. As we suspected, there are lower densities around the edge of the map. The center region is all above 800, which is great. The edges are close to 500, which is fine, but the corners are down in the 300s. This map is about what you should expect when the space is a little too large for the fixture. If I reduce the area to 3 square feet, I'm sure we would have great densities everywhere. But depending on your harvest goals, this still might be a great light for you in a 2x2 two two tent. Let's run the numbers. As I mentioned, the hanging height was 23 centimeters, about 9 inches, and the maximum PPFD was 1,000 micromoles per square meter. Across this PAR map, the average PPFD is 540.1. We multiply that by the 0.36 square meter test area, which shows us that the MF1000 produced a usable PPF of 194.4 micromoles. During the test, I measured a power draw of only 95.6 watts, which means the MF1000 has a usable photon efficiency of 2.03 micromoles per watt. This is all very close to what we predicted using the data from Maxison. Let's go back to the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light calculator to compare. All right, as you can see, the estimated data is still here in the calculator on the left. We could enter the data from the PAR test in this calculator too. When you use PAR test data in the calculator, it would be usable PPF. But we load all our tested fixtures in the preloaded calculator on the right, and I already added these results for the Maxison MF1000. You can see the 95.6 watts that I measured. 
and the 194.4 micromoles of usable PPF. You can click on this pop-up to see the discount codes and Amazon shopping links. If you use discount code MF1000COCO on Amazon, the current price is only $111. Okay, you can see that the measured results are just a little bit shy of our estimates. The photon efficiency is almost exactly what we predicted. It's 2.03 micromoles per watt, compared to 2.05. The difference in the results is simply because it drew a little bit less power, 95.6 watts, rather than an even 100. But these efficiency ratings are impressive. The MF1000 is one of only a very few fixtures to get better than 2 micromoles per watt and cost less than 60 cents per micromole. At only 57 cents per micromole, it ties for the lowest price among fixtures in our test library with superior efficiency. We could see in the PAR map that 4 square feet was a bit of a stretch. The calculator confirms that 3 square feet would be ideal. But if you have modest harvest goals, there's nothing wrong with running an MF1000 in a 2x2 tent. In that space, most growers would be able to hit the benchmark estimate of over 5 ounces. But if you want to be fully lit, plan for the MF1000 to cover just 3 square feet. In addition to this listing in the calculator, we also publish complete test report pages for each fixture that we test. This video will be at the top, followed by all of the data from the PAR test and my written review. Here's the data that we just discussed. Below that, you'll find the detailed PAR test data and the PAR map. If you have a larger space, you can use this calculator to determine how many MF1000s you'd need for full coverage. And below that, you'll find my written review. The new Maxisun MF1000 is a great little high efficiency light. Although it draws only about 100 watts, it gets superior efficiency. It's a perfect option if you're looking to light a small space, add a little light to your current space, or use it for clones, seedlings, or mothers. It's well built with top end components and it has some cool features. The integrated aluminum heat sink allows the MF1000 to run pretty cool. The highest temperatures that I measured were 53 degrees Celsius, 127.4 Fahrenheit, on the heat sink, and 54.6 degrees Celsius, 130.3 Fahrenheit, on the driver. One of the fun features on the new MF series fixtures is the remote control. I tried it out and ran a dimming test. The remote is quick and responsive. As you can see, the dimmer runs a little strong, but it's consistent and pretty accurate. I think the MF1000 is perfect for seedlings. You could keep it at 23 to 25 centimeters, or 9 to 10 inches, the whole grow. Start sprouts at 10% on the remote dimmer, and gradually raise the dimmer up to 10% per day if they're growing well. By the end of the seedling stage, you can be up at 100%. The MF1000 is a great little light. They come at a discount price, but the MF series are high quality, high efficiency fixtures. And Maxison is a brand that I feel good about recommending. I appreciate their transparency and honesty, along with the quality of their lights. If they fit your needs, I highly recommend the new Maxison MF series. Coco for Cannabis Grow Light Testing is impartial. We always put growers' interests first. Our goal is to provide reliable, science based testing and reviews for growers. We do not get paid for testing lights but we do earn commissions when you make purchases using our codes. You can support our work simply by using our discount codes when you purchase a grow light. I'd like to thank Bill Johnson from Maxison for sending me the light to test. And thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other PAR test reports and grow light physics videos. And I hope you come visit us at CocoForCannabis.com. We publish articles, tutorials, and guides on the science and practice of growing cannabis. You can read our articles, chat with our community, browse the Grow Light test reports, and try your hand at the Grow Light calculator. Join us in the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Challenges, and let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you grower love.